fonts, fonts, fonts. We use fonts a lot, but most of us don't actually know how to properly use them. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to properly use fonts, how to properly load fonts, the way that I use fonts. And I'll be showing you using Svelte Kit, but these strategies apply when you're using any other types of framework, React, Next, Astro, whatever, close your boats. The first step is for you to get a font. Now there are multiple ways for you to get a font, Google fonts, whatever. The one that I like to use is font source. This is their website right here. And I will also recommend that you also use font source. They have all the fonts you would, can ever think of. And they give you a very quick and easy way of adding them to your um, projects. So now let's search for a font. So I don't have a specific font in mind. So I'll just filter out. I want to display font and I also yeah, I think that'll be all. I just want to display font, something that stands out. Yeah, something like this. I will go with lobster. I like lobster. So once you've gotten the font that you want to use, just click on it. And one other thing I would like for you guys to know is preferably go for a variable font. Now, lobster is not a variable font. So I'll go back and I'll look for a variable font because that will just make more sense for this tutorial. Now, if your font that you want to use doesn't have a variable um parts just you can go whatever they give you but now this as very as you can see on the right side the bottom right side there's this variable batch let me know that this is a variable font so i'll go for that and now as you can see compared to the last one where we just add one weight for a variable fonts we have basically all the weights defined so we have um, and it will be defined in just one import we don't have to import um nine or whatever amount different types of font because you're trying to use a different weight the variable fonts they all come in just one so that's why it's best to use variable fonts if you can now when you're choosing the fonts you want preferably variable fonts just go to the pre the install button and click on it and you'll be given instructions on how to install this font i'm using pnpm and just choose variable it might be on static click on variable then choose the installation process you want to use i'm using pnpm i will just copy this code and i will paste this in my terminal i'm in my terminal now and if I click there i'll paste there and i will click enter and wait for that to install now while that is installing i'll go back to the website to see the remaining of the instructions as you can see we have the imports and as you can see the comments here says support with 100 to 900 because this is a variable font and we can just copy this and if we didn't actually sorry if we didn't Use the variable font went to the static. You see the difference. Now we need to choose all the weights that we need. And you can see now if we want to use all of these fonts, we're going to have basically nine imports. And that's that's crazy. So if you want, if um you the fonts you want to use as a variable font, go for the variable. Copy this. And now that the font is installed, we want to import that in our very root layout. Now again, this um, strategy works for any framework you are using if you are using next or whatever let's go to the root layout and import this this is my root layout and i'll paste this right here i'll get rid of this comment i don't need this now i'm using tailwind but again this strategy will work if you're using pure css for tailwind the next thing you're going to want to do is go to your tailwind config and add this to your extents object this so for it, for me what i'm going to add is the font family this is how it should be for you if you are using tailwind if you are not using tailwind this should be in your css the font family then the sun is going to be yeah it's going to be the name of the font now i have crimson pro variable which is not the name of the font so i'm going to have to change that name i'll go back to the documentation and find the name the name says grand what's that grand standard variable <laughs> i'll copy that and if you were using just css you just put it in the body like this And I'll just replace this here. Now, the reason why this is an array is because of you can add four back fonts to this. So if grand standard variable for some reason didn't work, you can have four backs, but we won't be boring about that. And yeah, you can have the names of the fonts you want. So grand standard variable is going to be our sans fonts. And that was basically the default font when using Tailwind. Now you can actually have this be like display. And then I want to use this, I'll just have to write font display and that's how I'll be able to use it. But I don't, I want this to be the default font of this application. I'm just going to call this start. Save that. I'll go to my CSS file. 
and yeah i can add one thing to just make sure that it always works i would add to the base layer and in the base layer i would just add a style to the body using applies direct use and i'll add font sans now font sans is grand standard variable and i'll save this now i'm pretty sure that it's going to work and the way i can test this out right now is by running this application and seeing the way it looks like now i'm running my dev server if you don't know how to run the dev server it's basically npm run dev since we're using bits it's, the command is bit dev but for your package manager it's going to be npm run dev in my case since i'm using pnpm it's pnpm dev so if you are using pnpm as well just type in pnpm dev enter and that should spin up the dev server for you and this is what i have in my index page just fonts spammed multiple times so when i go to my browser as you see fonts spammed multiple times but in a certain font which is the grand standard font that i declared now i'm going to my browser and exactly what i want to see so this is what i want to see let me just increase this as you can see this is in the fonts that we defined but there is just one more issue that we need to fix which is when we refresh this you see there's a little snap it goes from the default font to the fonts that we defined and that's how it's always going to be so if you deploy your application um it's going to cache the fonts so that for the first time you load your website or user lose your website you're going to see this that's snapping and that's not good for the first time experience but later on when they refresh it it's going to be cached so they're not going to be seeing that snapping happens but i don't like that snapping at all um it's lazy loading the font and i don't want it what i want to, to do is to preload the font and i can easily do that when using spelt kits so what i'm basically so what i'm basically going to do is create a hook for that and I don't want to go really deep into what hooks are in Spellsky. They are basically middlewares and stuff like that. But I'll have another video explaining in details what hooks are. But for now, just follow along. What you want to do is go to your root SRC. So click on the app.html so you know that you are on the root of the SRC folder. And create a new file called hooks.server.ts. I'm using TypeScript, so TX. If you are using JavaScript, it's going to be JS. When you click this, I'm going to remove this bar and I'll paste in this code. And now I'm going to explain what's going on. So first of all, I'm importing sequence from spelt kit slash kit slash hooks. Just keep this in mind. You don't really have to um, think about this. And now we are the next line. We are importing the handle type, and that so that we can have um, type safety. And after that, we have this preload font functions that i created and in this preload fun function this is a hook an undo hook and as you can see the type is of undo and what we're basically doing is the structuring the event and the resolve and we're then going to return the response so it's just going to run on every um reload of the website so every time the website reloads this hook runs and we are returning the response but what are we actually doing in the response this is actually the the magic where the magic is happening so what we're basically doing is we are checking if the type is of fonts so if the type is of fonts we're going to preload it that's basically what we're doing we're going to be so we can actually preload multiple assets things like images and all that but we're not actually doing that what we're doing is only checking for the fonts so if the fonts if the type is of font if the type is of font we will preload it and now back to the sequence um function that we imported from spell slash kit slash hooks what this sequence allows us to do is run multiple hooks so now i am assuming that you're going to be using multiple hooks in your project and that's why i'm going to be using a sequence normally if i'm using one hook i'm just going to have to name this preload font undo and by default that will be the only hook to run or if i want to use multiple hooks i'm going to have to have named hooks and then um give them this undo type for type safety and when i want to run all those hooks in sequence i'm going to have to use the sequence function given to us by svelte kits and that's basically how it is and by, at the end of everything you have to export this function called undo and but in our case we are running a sequence but the name of this has to be undo always so that's basically it that's everything when it comes to fonts now if i save this file and i check the website one more time when we refresh this, you, you would probably notice something, but let's check it out. Uh, it snaps. Yeah, it still snaps. So you guys might have noticed that even when you refresh the website, it snaps. And the reason for that is this doesn't work in development. So this little hook would not run in 
work in development hooks in general do work in development they are just simply interceptors but this certain type of hook where we are preloading a font would not work in development what you're going to have to do is deploy your application and once your app is deployed you can test it one more time and for sure you shouldn't have this snapping behavior that you have when you refresh your font so let me know if you guys like this type of short content and if you would like to see more tips and tricks on spelt and spelt trick and spelt kits i love to see you guys comment let me know what you want me to do next have a great day and i'll see you in the next one